crushing pogies and shrimp that we found while we were running in the lake. That's what you get. All right, we're out here hooked up on another jack, Lake Ponce Train Tuna. And I know y'all can't really tell on the camera, but it's definitely a little darker than normal. We got some clouds, but the sun's right through them skinny clouds. It should be a lot brighter. It feels a little bit cooler. We're no Eclipse experts, but the Jacks seem to like it. We're beating them up pretty good out here. Caught them on just about everything you can think of. Tuna poppers early. You know, they're blowing up chasing bait, pogies and shrimp in the morning. It sounds like bowling balls dropping in the water when, you, when they hit that tuna popper. Right now, I got another one hooked up on H&H &H swim bait. Caught them on fly rods. There's so many ways to catch these things. No question the most underrated fish in our estuary. <sighs> If you like just fighting fish, give us a call. We'll get you out here on these jacks. really cool to fish during the middle of a lunar eclipse. We didn't know what to expect as far as the fishing went or what to see, what we were going to witness out there as far as like seeing the sun and the moon pass in front of it. Well, obviously the eclipse or maybe it was a coincidence had the Jack of L fired up as we were crushing those all morning. But about 1.30 p.m. the eclipse happened down here in uh, South Louisiana on Lake Pontchartrain and we wanted to make sure we stayed out there to witness it and we were told all week not to look into the eclipse uh, obviously you should never look into the Sun for a long period of time anyway but what we did is we to get some different shots to see of what it looked like we were taking video clippings of the reflection off of our matrix mirror sunglasses that we manufacture but it just looked like a perfectly round sun. It wasn't until we got back into the pass here and we saw some people on the bank with those specialty glasses looking at the eclipse. So we stopped, tied off to the bank and asked if somebody would let us use them. Sure enough, we put the glasses on and you could see the eclipse plain as day. It was incredible that you could see it so well with the glasses, but you couldn't see anything without. So what we tried to do, and it was very hard to get the shot, but we ended up getting it. We used the glasses and put them over our cameras, ended up getting a shot of, you know, seeing a, a partial to half, you know, a, a partial eclipse there. 
very interesting day and uh, excited to say that we are fishing in the middle of a lunar eclipse which obviously only happens once every couple hundred years so I hope you enjoyed this episode of Dockside TV we really enjoyed being out there and doing something so unique so Jack Carvel, we, we try to catch everything out there. You check out all our other, all of our episodes at matrixshed.com. I know Jack Carvel isn't the tastiest fish in the world. We obviously throw them back, but it's one heck of a fighting fish, very similar to like a small yellowfin tuna. But what we're gonna do to show you what we did eat when we got home is we're gonna show you a good recipe of searing some yellowfin tuna that we got from a good friend of ours. So come inside and check us out as we're gonna show you a recipe with some yellowfin tuna. All right, although we weren't catching yellowfin tuna, the Jack Revelle does fight very similar to it. And they're one of the most powerful fish pound for pound on the water. And unfortunately, they're not one of the tastiest fish on the water. So what we're gonna cook this afternoon is, this is yellowfin tuna. A lot of people often think that they catch a yellowfin in inland waters when it's just a jack or bell. But this is the poor man's way to have the entertainment of a yellowfin, but eat like a yellowfin. You go catch a jack, throw it back, and then buy some yellowfin at the store. Real simple recipe here, in my opinion, there's only one way to cook yellowfin, and that's, that's to sear it like sushi style. We're just gonna load it with coarse pepper, black pepper, on all sides, load it down pretty good with that, flip it over, load it down again. Then all we're gonna do is sear it on both sides for about 30 seconds, and that's it. All right, what you wanna do is get your pan as hot as you possibly can. I see the smoke starting to come off of it. We're just gonna flash cook this thing. We're gonna go 30 seconds on each side. We're just gonna get the outside a little bit of a crust. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fan on because it's probably gonna smoke pretty good here because it's so hot. I'm just going to count it out, one, two, three, four, five, go to 30 seconds. And you're going to just see the bottom of it cooking, you're going to see it just start turning white. And as soon as it looks like the whole bottom's getting that white, like flake around it, then it's time to flip it over and do the same exact thing on the other side. You want it to still be rare as can be in the middle, but just create a crust on the outside. It's getting pretty white, looks good. We're gonna just flip it, do the same thing. As you can see right here, it's white on top. A good pink red in the middle. You really wanna do this uh, recipe with fresh tuna. I wouldn't, uh, you know, it's a lot better when it's fresh. You can do it if you got it vacuum sealed and frozen, but fresh off the boat. I'm lucky enough to have some friends that have big enough boats to catch yellowfin tuna because my little 18 foot boat, all I can do is catch jack or bells. All right, this is about ready. Got a good white on both sides. That's a, what, it, what you want it to look like. Red in the middle, white on both sides. We're gonna go ahead and put it back on that pepper plate. Now this is the little trick. And turn the fan off. We're gonna put it in the freezer and we're gonna serve it cold. One, it makes it, you, we're gonna slice this and when it comes out when it's cold, it, it cuts a lot easier into fine little pieces. It makes a great appetizer. We're gonna put it in here for about 15 or 20 minutes. Let it just sit there and get nice and cold. And then we're gonna come out and cut it and I'm gonna show you the magic little sauce that makes it taste so great. Alright, so it's been 10 15 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and pull it out the freezer. And like I said, it really tastes good served cold, but what this does is it makes it cut very easy. You want to get you a real sharp knife. And you want to try to find that right grain, and that way you can cut it into little, little slithers. And we're just gonna, and you kind of, it's almost like slicing a loaf of bread. You want it to just kind of. It's just little bite-sized pieces. We're just gonna cut it pretty thin. Let it fall on over to the next one. It's gonna taste good no matter how nice your cut comes, but 
A nice pretty cut makes a really nice presentation. So now you got it cut like that, and this is the magic ingredient right here. What we like to use is ponzu sauce. Good. You want to be pretty generous with it. I'm going to pour that right in the middle, get it in between each cut, and I'm going to pour a lot of it. That way it seeps into the plate, and that way you can dip it into the plate. And this is ready to go. Seared tuna, yellowfin.